stood behind you, what would you do? Would you, would you praise Jesus for what he done? Would you run to your family and hug them and, and thank God that you get to spend more time with them? Would, would, you, lead, would you lead a different life? Would the things that were once important to you, would they seem as important as they did before? Would the things that bothered you, would they be, would they be this bothersome thing anymore or would it just be trivial as in comparison to being dead? How would you live your life from then on? The Bible doesn't really tell us a whole lot in, through the 11th and 12th chapters of the book of John. It does say in the 12th chapter of the book of John that, that Jesus went in and, and he sat down and he ate with them. So Lazarus went back to eating. He went back to doing the things he did. But the thing about it was, Lazarus was alive. He was alive. He was called out from the dead, and he came back to life. Now, if you read through church history, if you read through the documents that, that you can find that pertains to Lazarus, there's a couple of theories. That one, that he, he died pretty much he lived a few years and, and, and died right there where he was at having been a faithful servant to uh, the cause of Christ there was another one that said that he actually uh, and I forget the, the place he was made kind of like the ruler of but he was made a ruler of this place he went on to accomplish great things but the Bi Bible never gives us what happened to Lazarus next so a lot of that we just have to suppose in our mind what happened to Lazarus after that there are several instances in the Bible, and if you want to turn with us, we're going to be reading out of Romans, the sixth chapter today, but there are several instances in the Bible that talks about where people were raised from the dead. Just a few in the New Testament is, one, you think about, uh, you think about the widow of Nain, the woman from Nain, her son. You find that in the book of Luke, that because of his resurrection, he, he went out and they, they said, hey, this guy's dead. Jesus raised him from the dead, and he said he rose up and he began to talk. He began to speak after Jesus raised him from the dead. Pretty interesting, is it not, that, that, that Jesus raised somebody from the dead, and one of the things it is, they begin to talk. One of the other things that we see is in the 8th chapter of the book of Luke, Jairus' daughter. Jairus' daughter is raised from the dead. It was even to the point to where that, that they came and they told Jesus, said, don't even bother going down there. Don't even bother with it because she's dead. Jesus went down there, and, and, and as you're finding places in the sixth chapter of the book of Romans, I'll give you the story of Jairus' daughter, that Jesus went down there, and they told him, said, listen, she's dead. Don't even think about it. Jesus looked around and said, don't worry about it. She just sleeps. And all the people around started to laugh at him. Oh, she's just asleep. Oh, yeah, you know, making fun of him. They were telling Jesus how pointless it was to try to raise her from the dead. Jesus went in. What did he do? He raised her from the dead. The reason I told you those stories is this. is because I want you to understand that there is something that you've got to do. If you were raised from the dead, if you were more than just the walking dead, there is more to your life. There is more of a purpose to your life than you know. As Lazarus was raised up, we don't have a biblical account of what happens to Lazarus. We can only suppose what happens to him. But we do know this, that Lazarus was alive. And I wonder sometimes, are we alive? Or are we just the walking dead? You know, they could have left Lazarus bound hand and foot. And he could have just walked around like a mummy, bound hand and foot. Not much of a use to anybody, right? Right? And then I'm going to go ahead and go out on limb. If they left him bound hand and foot, then here's the thing. He would have probably starved, him, starved to death, and he'd have probably fell back dead, and they would have saved a lot of money on another burial because they'd have just pitched him back in the cave, rolled stone back in front, and that'd have been done. He could have lived like he was dead. He could have sat up on the side of his, of his little tomb there, and he said, nope, I'm dead, and just laid back down and died. But when Jesus called him forth, he called him forth with a purpose. He called him forth so that the glory of God might be shown to those around him. There was a purpose in raising Lazarus from the dead. And I want you to know something today. If you are here and you have accepted Christ as your Savior, that he called you out from the grips of death and sin and he raised you for a purpose today. Amen. He did not raise you to be the walking dead. He raised you to be alive in him. 
In the sixth chapter of the book of Romans, it says, it's starting in the fourth verse. It says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of, of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in, that he, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto our sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul was writing to the Romans and he said, listen, he said, if you died out to sin, you died out with Christ's crucifixion. That when he was crucified, he was crucified for our sin. And that if we die with him, that in the resurrection we also live with him. If there was ever a thought that we as God's people should get today is that we, we don't have to walk around like we're dead. Amen. It's an amazing thing to me that God's people walk around with this zombie-like look on their face. With this, this idea that, oh, I'm just waiting for Jesus to come and get me. I'm just existing until Jesus comes back. I'm just existing until I get to heaven. Praise God. I don't believe that is why that God called us out of our sin and out of our death. I believe God called us so that we might live unto him. Can you imagine today if God's people, and I started to title this message this, look alive. I mean, honestly, honestly, sometimes we come to the house of God and we act like we're bound hand and foot just like Lazarus. And we truly are. We're bound by what we think other people are going to say about us. We're bound by our doubts. We're bound by our fears. We're bound by what we did yesterday and we know we shouldn't have. We're bound by our past. And we're troubled by what the future holds. Praise God, I'm going to tell you something. It is time that you realize that when Jesus Christ saved your soul, that he called you out and said, come forth, let him loose. Amen. Amen. Be loose from your doubt. Be loose from your fear. Be loose from your troubles. Be loose from all that. Now, I'm not going to say that life is going to be easy. There's going to be sufferings to partake of. There's going to be things that happen. But praise God, through Jesus Christ, we're overcomers of all of that. We as God's people need to look alive today and not look like the walking dead. It's an amazing thing. You can stand out on the porch and you can watch people come to church. And it's like, it's the same thing that I picture happening when somebody gets led from their cell to the place of death on death row. One foot after the other. Head down. No praise. No glory, no excitement. Amen. We as God's people today should be excited and alive and be joyous and happy and overwhelmed. I believe, amen, when they let Lazarus loose, and there's no account of this, I believe old Lazarus, amen, he came forth, he was doing some high step and some strut when he came out of there. Amen. amen. I believe when Martha and Mary looked at him, they was like, they couldn't contain their praise of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, thank you for what you've done. He was once dead, but now he's alive. I want you to know something. Why, what if God's people today, amen, got their self in a speck of praise this morning, amen, thankful for what Jesus has done in the lives of those around us. Amen. amen. I look out and I think, you know, I, I get to be involved in a lot of people's story in this church. A lot of people talk to me about stuff. A lot of people come to me with their, their, their trials and their troubles and their tribulations. But here's one of the things that amazes me. Is I also get to see the victories that Jesus has won in your lives. I know and, I, and without naming individuals I can look around and I can say, Here's a victory. There's a victory. There's a victory. There's a victory. How many times God has been good to us. I tell you what. If we just went on how good God has been to us. Amen. We would praise God today. 
Amen. When we come to the house of God, it would, it would be overwhelming. I believe when they were sitting there in the 12th chapter of the book of John and it says that Jesus was eating with them, I picture that you couldn't, you couldn't have knocked the grin off of Lazarus' face. Amen. <laughs> How's the food? I don't care. I'm alive to enjoy it. Does that suit you? It doesn't matter. I have been raised from the dead. As Christians, amen. It shouldn't have to suit us. It shouldn't have to taste just right. It shouldn't have to be just right. Why? Because I've been raised from the dead, praise God. The Bible teaches me that when I am going to be absent in this body, praise God, I am going to be present with the Lord, amen. Never have to worry about death or hell or any of those things. Praise God, through and by Jesus Christ, amen, and the saving grace of Jesus, I don't have to worry about it no more. Amen. 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 Neither do you. Neither do you. I thought about those people that were raised from the dead, what their life must have been like after that. I thought about it. Oh, so-and-so says something about it. I don't care. I don't like the way you look. I don't care. I don't like the way you smell. You should have smelled me after four days in the grave. You think this is bad, it could get a lot worse. I'm just happy to be alive through Jesus Christ. Can you imagine if, it, if we as Christians broke it down so simply that you know what? I was once dead in my sin and now because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, I am alive forevermore. It's that simple. I was once dead by sin. I was once a slave to it. I was once bound by it. And because Jesus came through and said, come forth. And because I came forth what he called. Amen. I was loose from all that. Not to be bound anymore. No matter what Satan does to me. No matter how many darts he throws at me. I am by the blood of Jesus Christ saved forevermore. No matter what happens. There was times, I'm sure, and, and, and we picture Lazarus from then on as just, just walking on this next level up, right? Now, I'm sure there was a day when Lazarus was walking along in his sandals and there's probably a big old rock went right up in between his feet and his sandals and he stepped on it and it was so painful. Oh!
preached to you. God, you put opportunities in front of me, and God, I am so thankful for those opportunities. Someday, they look like they look like things to praise you for. And someday, they look like trials. But every single thing you put in my path is an opportunity to show your glory and your strength through the power of the resurrection. God, the good times and the bad, the troubles and trials and the times of rejoicing, God, every single one of them is something that you've put in my past so that your glory can shine. And God, I'm alive. I am alive in you. And God, I'm excited to be alive. I don't dread when I get up in the morning. I don't dread, oh, what's this day going to bring? Can you imagine if instead of waking up in the morning, go, oh, we looked up and said, wow. God, what are you going to bring in front of me today? Now, I know that's probably not a realistic thought for a lot of people. And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, it's not a realistic thought for myself. We have a standing joke at our place of work. We don't have Monday through Friday. We have Monday 1 through 5. <laughs> Wednesday's Monday number 3. But you know what I have found? I have found that each and every opportunity that we have is an opportunity to show God praise and glory. And there are days when that is extremely hard. When things are not going right and the world is falling apart and the wheels have fell off of it and you're having a bad day, maybe it's health or finances or family or whatever's going on in your life and you're saying, God, I don't see how you could possibly get anything good out of this. How about stopping for a moment and say, God, you raised me from the dead. God, what good can you get from this? God, you saved me. You placed your spirit within inside of me. So that means there's a purpose for this in my life. What is that purpose, God? How can I use what's in front of me right now to glorify and honor your name? How can we do it? Jesus, I'm alive in you. We come to this time of the year, this time where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And it's such a special time in the lives of Christians. We, we look at this, this miraculous event, and it is the whole basis of our hope and belief in life eternal. That through by the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that is how that you and I have a way into the Father. It is greatly to be celebrated. But if we live our life like we're dead, like there is no power in it, then this absolutely does no good. We act, if we act like Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit cannot come into our lives, motivate us, help us, strengthen us, and guide us, then you might as well roll the rock back in front of the tomb and it not mean anything. We as God's people got to live like we're alive. Amen. And man, when Jesus came forth that morning, and, and I'll be honest with you, as I was thinking about this message, I was like, Lord, can I wait till Easter? Can I wait till Easter? And he's like, no, they need to get it now because Easter will mean a whole lot more. And I was picturing what it must have been like in heaven that morning. I, I, was, I pictured what it must have been like when that stone rolled back and Jesus came out of that tomb. I bet you in heaven, oh my goodness, can you imagine? You ain't never heard the applause and 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 the celebration like what probably went on with the angels in heaven as they looked down and the Son of God came out victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Amen. The power that came forth out of that tomb that day was the salvation of millions of souls. It was the glorification of the heavenly Father, the creator of all. And the great thing about it is through and by the power of that resurrection, I am alive. I'm alive. If I die before I make it out of this building this morning, I want you to know something. Don't sit around and cry for me because I, the only thing that's died is this old carnal flesh that was holding me back anyway, that that soul I mean, lives forevermore with Jesus Christ, my Savior. Amen. Amen. I told Andrea a long time ago, she thought I was joking, but I really wasn't. There used to be a pop song called Celebrate by Cooling the Gang. Now, some of you that are children of the 80s probably remember that song. Celebrate good times, come on. Yeah, I won't sing it in church. <laughs> but I told her, I said, at my funeral, 
I said, as they, as either coming or going, somebody better play that song. She said, you're out of your mind. I said, I, I, I said that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, is that when I drop this robe of flesh, I'm going to be celebrating good times with the Lord. I am going to be celebrating my return home. You see, this ain't home. This is just a temporary place. This, this, is not where, this is not what it's all about. What it's all about waits for me on the other side. All this is is to train me and to get my mind and heart and myself right to get to that point. I told Patrick the other day, I said, you know what? I don't want to get to heaven praising God and acting like a rookie. I don't, I don't want to get there acting like some kind of newbie. You know, it's like, well, what's he doing? Huh? He's praising me. I... Yeah, I guess that's what we ought to do. Amen. When I get to heaven, I want to look like I've done it a time or two. I, I, want, I want somebody to look at me and say, hey, that guy came prepared. Hey Amen. He, he's done some worshiping before. That guy's done some praising. That guy, he knows what it's all about. Hey Amen. That's what we should be like here. Hey Amen. Praising God and worshiping and not letting all the things of this world so easily get us out of kilter. Amen. Can I ask you this morning, how many people probably come in this house out of kilter this morning? You probably come in and think about all the bad things that were going on in your life, all the troubles and trials and issues and health and all the other things. <laughs> and there's probably people, and I ain't going to ask you to show your hands, there's probably people who came in here this morning without ever giving one thought about how good God is. Probably come in here just as miserable as you could be. <laughs> I just hope that, that everybody else can whine as good as I can. And you never thought once, God, you are so good to me. You are so good to me. We sung that song last week, God has been good in my life. He has been so good to me. I look around and I see things in my life that if I could change, I would. I, I would. There are failures, there are hurts, there are pains that I wished did not have to be there. But you know what? I have found out that God is still good through all of it. God is good through all of it. If we can't do anything else today, can, 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 you, can you do it with me? And, and don't do it if you don't mean it, okay? If you don't mean it, don't do it. But if you do mean it, just raise your hand for a moment and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being good to me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being a heavenly father that goes beyond my imagination and my expectation. God, thank you for love and for forgiveness and mercy and grace. Thank you for peace and joy. God, thank you for even in the hard days, Lord, being there. And on the good days, Lord, I thank you. Being able to step out and just feel the, the sunshine on your face and the gentle breeze that blows. God, you are so good. God, I look around at my family and, and, and God, you are just so good to me. I look around at my church family and I think, God, how, how good could you possibly be to feel this loved by this many people there are people all over the world that would, that would give anything to feel this loved. To feel even the love of one person. It, they would give anything and to be loved by this many people. Man, that, that is just awesome. That is just awesome. God, how good are you to me? God, you give me an opportunity to praise you. And God, that's what I want to do. I, wanna, I just want to praise you. This morning, I'm going to ask if they will come and get a song. And you say, Brother Randy, this is, this is a strange message. You know what? It is because it's a shame. It is a shame that if you come through these doors and you resemble the walking dead more than you resemble a live Christian, it's a shame. Amen. If you're more concerned about the grave clothes that bind you than the life that God gives you, it's a shame. If you're, if you're looking back into the grave versus looking outside and saying, God, this is what you've opened up to me, it's a shame. God, I, I'm not bound by that anymore. I have no reason to look back into that grave. If y'all want to, go ahead and roll that stone back in front of that door, but I'm not going to be in there. That is, has no use for me anymore. That, that's not mine. Those grave clothes, throw them away. I don't need them because I'm alive in Jesus Christ. As we as God's people, as we stand and as we sing today, if you can, if you, if you, in your heart you're saying, Brother Andy, I just not, I've not been feeling that. I've not been feeling alive. How about just coming and talking to Jesus about it? 
Jesus, I would love to feel that. I would love to experience that. Or just maybe, just maybe you're feeling alive and you would, like, you would just like to share that. Maybe you'd like to lift up your voice in song or raise your hand in praise. How about sharing that? It's whatever the Lord lays on your heart today as we sing. Why did he go to Calvary? Why was his life's blood shed for me? Why did he suffer as no man has ever done? There's just one reason.